In this video tutorial, we will show you everything you need to know to install your new bath kit. We recommend you watch this video in its entirety before starting your installation as it shows you the complete installation process. Then, as you begin installing, we recommend watching each segment as many times as you need before and during the completion of that step. Though this video depicts an installation of a three-wall kit over a bathtub, you can adapt what you learn here to install your kit over a shower base instead of a bathtub or even a two-wall shower kit. The application and concepts are the same. As always, if you have particular questions regarding the installation of your kit, we have technical assistance available by phone. We have broken the process into nine steps. They are cutting panels, tub corner reinforcement, measuring, installing panels, wet wall panel, tub leg installation, trim, corner shelf, and silicone. Your bath kit is a very easy system to cut and install. You can choose from a couple easy methods to cut your panels to fit your project. One method is scoring and snapping your panel. Using a sharp razor or utility knife, you can score the panel from the top or image side. It might take two passes to get deep enough. Then snap off the unwanted portion as shown here. A good knife is also very handy to trim up your panel to get a nice tight corner fit. But be careful when using a knife. My favorite method, however, is the use of a jigsaw to cut the panel. This is a very safe way to get the job done. A jigsaw blade with down direction cutting teeth will give you a nice clean cut. Either way you choose to cut your panel, you'll probably have a rough or wavy edge. You can clean up the cut edge of your panel by using a power plane or a belt sander. If you need to scribe the panel and trim just a little off, these tools are your best choice. The first step is to install the flashing tape into the vertical corners. This tape has been cut to the height of your wall panels, matching the kit style you have selected. When installed, it will produce straight, strong, watertight, and mold resistant inside corners. Apply a generous bead of adhesive onto both walls about three quarters of an inch away from the corner. Fold the tape at the center crease with the print side together. Then press the tape into the corner using a taping or putty knife. Adjust if necessary to create a straight line and swipe up and down to nudge the flashing tape into the corner of the wall and to flatten out the corner. This deluxe composite flashing tape creates a tough, durable, and very flat inside corner. Repeat this process on the other vertical inside corner of your shower you're now ready to begin the wall panel installation process. The back wall is the first panel to install. This panel needs to fit as close as possible into both the left and right corners of the back wall and snugly to the bathtub or shower base. Keep in mind that the walls may not be square or plumb so you'll need a series of measurements to achieve a nice fit. A great method is to draw a level line halfway up on your back wall, then draw a plumb line in the center of the back wall. These two lines represent measuring points. Measure the distance from center plumb line to the right corner in three spots, top, middle, and bottom of wall, and repeat these measurements on the left side of the plumb line. This gives you six measurements. Then transfer these measurements to your panel for marking and cutting. A foolproof method of transferring these measurements is to draw it out as shown. Once you've marked the inside measurement of your back wall, 
you can then mark and cut off the unneeded portion. Cutting off the excess on the left and right of the panel will provide an accurate fit. When making marks on the panel in preparation for cutting, you may use a fine tip sharpie. This shows up well and is easily removed with denatured alcohol. Now you are ready to take vertical measurements. From your center horizontal line, you will once again need three measurements, left, center, and right. Transfer these measurements to the panel as you did with the other measurements. Cut your panel according to the marked lines. Since the top of this panel will be covered with the trim piece, it is not necessary to mark or cut the top. Dry fit the panel, and when satisfied with the fit, it is time to install the panel. Before applying adhesive, clean off the back panel and the back wall with a broom or a clean rag. Both wall and back panel must be dust free to achieve full bond. Apply the adhesive as shown, placing dots of adhesive about 4 inches apart over the entire panel. If you choose, you may apply adhesive directly to the sheetrock wall instead of the panel. Either way, once the panel is in place, Firmly push or pound the panel to full adhesion. Go ahead and be firm with pressure. With the back wall in place, it is time to fit the side wall. Holding the side panel against the back wall and tub or shower base, you will see how it needs to be trimmed to achieve a tight fit. Mark and cut your scribed lines always dry fit before applying adhesive. If the fit is good, for extra protection, now is the right time to apply a bead of silicone between the back panel and the side walls as shown. This is done now to avoid a mess while dry fitting this side panel. Apply adhesive and install the side panel in the same manner as the back wall. A great way to find the center points of each of the holes to be cut is to measure the location of your holes. You will need both vertical and horizontal measurements for each pipe and valve. The vertical measurements are from the tub to the center of the pipe or valve. The horizontal measurements are from the back wall to the center of each pipe. If your surround has a shower head, measure and mark in the same way. Transfer these measurements to the actual panel and you are now ready to cut holes. Another way is to utilize the bath kit packaging box and cut down a piece of cardboard to the size of this wet wall panel. This cardboard panel can now be used as a template to accurately mark plumbing fixtures by allowing you to make impressions on the back side of the cardboard. Your plumbing valve hole should be cut to 3.5 to 4 inches in diameter. Not only is this an easy way to find the exact location of the plumbing pipes and valves, it also facilitates scribing the panel into the back wall and against the tub or shower base. Trim down the cardboard template until you get the perfect fit. Lay the cardboard template directly onto the sidewall panel and trace the bottom and inside corner onto the flexstone panel. Then mark the centers of the valve and pipes to be cut. You are then ready to cut the holes and dry fit this panel. For the tub spout and shower head pipe holes, you may use a 1 and a 4 inch hole saw as shown or a paddle bit of the same size. For the larger valve hole that you need to cut, you can use a 3 and a half inch hole saw or mark a circle and cut out with a jigsaw. If you're using a hole saw, I prefer to drill a pilot hole in the center, then turn the panel over and cut the hole from the back. 
I cut from the back so I won't ruin the panel if the whole saw jumps a bit. If using the jigsaw method, you'll need to pre-drill a small hole to fit your jigsaw blade down into. Now that your holes are cut, you can dry fit this panel and make minor adjustments to get a great fit. Once satisfied, go ahead and apply adhesive and install this panel. Don't forget to shoot a bead of silicone between the back wall panel and the side wall as you did on the previous side wall. If you have a Royale tub kit, you have the tub leg pieces that will need to be fit down the side of the tub. First measure the height and cut the piece to fit. Generally bathtubs have a slightly curved top so your project will look much better if you can scribe and trim the panel to fit the contour of the tub. Hold the panel tight to the tub and draw a scribed line up to and including the contour. Cut this piece and dry fit. Next, mark and cut the outer side of the tub leg piece to match the panel above. To install, apply adhesive on the back of this panel, and then apply a thin bead of your color matching silicone to the top of this small panel as shown. Wipe away excess with a wet finger or a nice clean cloth. Clean the silicone with a little denatured alcohol. This creates an appealing and watertight transition from tub leg to side wall panel. The back wall trim piece is the first piece to be installed. Take a measurement above the back panel from sheetrock to sheetrock. Cut this piece to length. Since the length of this piece is from sheetrock to sheetrock, you will need to notch the trim piece so it will fit from sidewall panel to opposite sidewall panel. Notice the notch and the fit here in this picture. Apply adhesive to the back of this trim piece, being careful not to get adhesive too close to the bottom lip. Go ahead and install this trim piece, making sure it's level. Notice that you may keep the trim piece from slipping down by applying a couple of strips of painter's tape as shown. Alternatively, using a couple of one to two inch strips of double face tape will hold the trim piece in place while the adhesive cures as well. Place these strips about 30 inches apart on the back of the trim piece. Apply a thin bead of adhesive, being careful not to cover your double face tape and install the trim piece according to your level line. You now draw a level line from the back wall trim piece. This mark will be the top side of the side wall trim piece. You also need a plumb line marked on the outside of the vertical trim piece or the longer trim piece. Just a small mark near the top of the trim piece will do. These marks represent measure marks for the two side wall trim pieces. Measure from the floor to the level mark. This is the measurement for your vertical side trim piece. Measure the distance from the back wall trim piece to the plumb line mark. This is the measurement for the shorter top horizontal trim piece. Dry fit, then apply adhesive and install. This is the finished look with the Royale tub kit. If you have a tub kit without the tub legs, your trim piece will run up alongside the bathtub. Generally, bathtubs have a slight curved top, so your project will look much better if you can scribe and round your trim piece to fit the contour of the tub. Hold the trim piece tight to the tub and draw a scribe line up to and including the contour. Now position this finished piece against the tub and plumb it. To avoid a hollow area, use a scrap piece of the panel to fill in the void. Glue the scrap piece of the panel to the wall. This will ensure a solid base on which to glue. Dry fit and make sure the contour fits nicely to the tub. Plumb and mark your trim and proceed with the install as shown before.
Start by drawing a couple of level lines as shown. Mark these two lines to have a slight forward slope to allow for water drainage. You'll notice that there are four pre-drilled holes in the bracket. Fold this bracket to conform to the corner and fasten the bracket into place using at least one and five eighths inch grabber screws. Once in place, bend the front portion of the bracket over and then fold the little tab over to lock the bracket into place. Place the shelf over the bracket by gently spreading apart. You can then determine if it fits correctly or needs a bit of scribe and trim work to achieve a nice tight fit. When satisfied you have the fit you want, wipe the inside area of the shelf with a clean cloth to remove dust. Dry fit your shelf to make sure you have a nice tight fit. Run a bead of silicone between the panel and the bracket, top and bottom as you see me doing here. Apply silicone to the top and bottom of bracket, staying away from the wall. Apply in dots or a bead. Gently spread the shelf apart and position over the bracket before releasing to avoid a silicone mess. Adjust to proper position and clamp if necessary. Clean joints with denatured alcohol and silicone the top, bottom, and sides. Please allow at least 24 hours before using your corner shelf. Clean and prep all joints to be siliconed with denatured alcohol on a soft white cloth. This will remove the oils and dust from these joints, thus ensuring a good bond. Places to be siliconed are the joints where panels and trim meet the tub or shower base, interior vertical joints where panel meets panel, and where trim has overlapped and meets the panel. Cut a small hole on the nozzle of your tube of silicone. I like a slightly angled tip. It's easy to make the hole bigger if necessary, rather than to fight a large bead of silicone. Moving slowly, apply silicone on the joints, then tool with a wet finger or inexpensive caulking tool. Since silicone can skin over rather quickly, it is suggested to apply silicone to a couple joints, then tool these before moving on. If you happen to get silicone or silicone smudges on your panels or trim, a soft cloth with a good dose of denatured alcohol will help remove these. The exterior where trim piece meets sheetrock can be siliconed if your wall is already painted. If your bathroom walls are not painted, it is recommended to use a good painter's caulk, not 100% silicone as paint will not adhere to silicone. Painter's caulk is easy to apply and cleans up with a wet rag or wet finger. Please allow at least 24 hours before installing plumbing fixtures and using your new bath surround. 